I said I won't review it, but now it's here. The Xperia 1 Mark 6. So let's get started with the unboxing and first look. It's relatively easy because what's inside the box is the same as with the One Mark 5 or even I think the One Mark 4 as well had this box already. You'll get the phone and a bit of paperwork there as well as so a bit of cheating there. But you can see the specs here. So we have the same setup as on the One Mark 5. 48 megapixels, 12 megapixels and 12 megapixels on the back and on the front 12 megapixels. Then we have the 6.5 inch screen there, full HD plus now instead of 4K. And we have a 5000 mAh battery, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and we have IP65 and 68. So what's not included is the yeah, adapter for power and uh, the um, cable, USB-C cable. And you can see here also what kind of um, charger you need. It's a 30 watt PD charger, so they didn't upgrade there anything. Otherwise, yeah, we have uh, 2G, 3G, LTE and 5G support as we can expect from a Sony device. So the Xperia 1 Mark 6, here we have it already. As you can see, I have the white variant here with still the size T-star coating and with the three lenses there. A nice Sony logo there and Xperia down below. Is it there? Actually, it's not really there. There it is. Uh, this is like dirt. <laughs> this is here somehow. Not sure if you can see it there a little bit there. It's very, very hard to see on this white version. And the sides are the usual ones that we saw already on the One Mark 5. I'm recording with the One Mark 5 right now. This is why I cannot show it to you. But this button has been made a little bit larger there. The thickness is a bit better there. We have the fingerprint reader here. We have the volume rocker. Same setup. On the other side, we don't have anything. We have this nice uh, rails there to help with the grip a bit. Also, the back is like, feels like a little bit plasticky, but it is actually um, glass, Gorilla Glass Victus. Then on the top we have the 3.5mm headphone jack. Still on the bottom we have the possibility to eject your SIM and um, your micro SD card, USB Type-C. And uh, yeah, this is basically everything. Let's take a look at the display. Let's wipe it so I can show you the display as a highlight. And uh, yeah, of course, I have to type in. This is the display and as you can see here, yes, I think they made it a bit slightly thinner there on the sides left and right. The top and bottom bezels are basically the same as on the One Mark 5. And we still have the front firing speakers here for great sound. They improved it a little bit in terms of bass and loudness there, which I really like. They improved the headphone jack and you can yeah, hear it with have, yeah, headphones plugged in. So there's a little bit less of noise, white noise going on if you don't listen to anything. And the separation between left and right channels is much, much better. So yes, it is better than on the One Mark 5, but it is not mind-blowingly good, I would say. And a yeah, dedicated quad deck amp, for example, like on the LG uh, phones of yesteryears, help a little bit more with yeah a better sound there then uh, we have the operating system still android but you can see they modified a little bit and they made it in my opinion a bit less goofy looking with those larger options there in the quick toggles which i really like and um, yeah this is uh, really really nice and we'll swipe down again we have even more, so we have more on first glance here, which I like. The rest looks pretty much the same, so we have the settings here. And uh, yeah, rotation sometimes have some issues still. And when we check out the system, we should see that we have run, uh, running Android 14 here with no updates available on this device currently. At least I didn't get any updates there on this device. So the rest is like pretty much vanilla stock Android. 
Uh, we have a few apps that I installed already, so I will not show you the usage of the storage, but it's roughly again 20 gigabytes. And we have this nice, um, yeah, first installation wizard that allows us to choose which bloatware we want, want to install. There are some applications that we cannot undo, like I think booking.com. And actually booking we can choose and I chose to have it installed. Um, there is no Tidal there anymore like on previous phones that had like I think a free trial of Tidal there. So you lose and maybe you gain something there because we have like only one camera app there. This spot here that on the OneMark 5 still had yeah, all my major camera applications only has now nothing there because we have only one camera application on the one mark six and i think this is a good point because the rest is like pretty much one mark five territory uh, with a new yeah android version and a faster cpu that of course in benchmarks is a bit quicker there than the one mark five but um, yeah the major thing is here i cloned also the one mark five software which worked fine here onto my one mark six there is a google assistant that allows you to do it with uh yeah plug in a cable USB-C and I did this without any issues as you can see here and we think I think we should check out the uh, camera application and a few camera samples that I took with this brand new Xperia 1 Mark 6 so let's check that out so here we have the pictures of the One Mark 6. On the left you can see some settings there. Sadly I cannot turn on the equivalent to 35mm because it's not written in the EXIF data there. Searched everywhere but you can only get the real uh, deal there but not the equivalent in 35mm uh, terms. So which means that we have, um, yeah, we have the ultra wide angle here. Um, that's for sure it has also a close focusing option there but it's nah, not working as expected at least it didn't work for me here we have overexposure as you can see here we have this autofocus there autofocus busy bokeh there uh, I have to test it again maybe but here I was a bit disappointed I switched immediately to the main camera sensor and cropped in two times the trick that I also used on the One Mark 5 already to show it to you and this works perfectly but also with the 1x lens you can get very very close already there and get lots and lots of detail here of those flowers so yeah close-up shots with the main camera sensor are possible but of course there's telemacro as well that we will show I will show you later on uh, let's first take the shot at the zoom lens here. This is I think 7.1 times zoom now, the maximum optical zoom that you can get. Yes, after walking in the woods I had to eat something, so Döner macht schöner. Uh, kebab, uh, Döner kebab I was eating there at a, a local restaurant. And what you can see here is that we have a little bit of like um, noise creeping in already and it's not so sharp there this at iso 80 is a bit disappointing but yeah we have this very tiny sensor so it explains it even in this daylight indoors shot we have this issue already and yeah a bit disappointing uh, otherwise in terms of colors i like the sony colors there you can have different color profiles for sure this one is uh, to show off the bokeh there i was focusing i think here somewhere in the front there and you can see nice bokeh there also with the main camera sensor that you can get without any issues. Then this is a little village that we were visiting there and it has like this little statue here and uh, yeah, it talks, I don't know what, what it talks about. Uh, I think it's supposed to be an owl, I don't know. Um, yeah, working fine, nice colors, but you will see already that it tends to overexpose a little bit in contrast to the One Mark 5 that usually tends to tune down this thing in HDR. It's like tending to overexpose a little bit here. It doesn't have any issues with this, just like the One Mark 4 and the previous uh, Sony devices did. Talking about HDR and overexposure and uh, lens coating when we are shooting directly against the sun, this is what you will see here. You can see overexposing the sun and we have like a little bit of a lens flare here this bluish one is very hard condition but it's doing i think it's okayish kind of job there but uh, yeah t-style coding cannot help or perform miracles here telemacro telemacro this is the maximum zoom option there 320 i think it is i'm not sure if it's 320 times or whatever this should be um 
of a little flower and if I zoom out to the 120 I think it is this is how it looks like so here yeah I can zoom in quite closely but a little bit of details um, are getting lost ISO 200 there you can see is a bit of noisy already and if I zoom out here yes there's a lot of detail like this little hairs and so on which is nice but the ISO at 200 and a little bit of noise yeah if you don't have enough light in this case I was in a shadow there I might run into some issues there but it looks otherwise phenomenal as, as a tele macro and yeah it is a manual slider manual uh, operation I like it a little bit more with the uh, automatic one which you can also set to manual by just pressing holding on the Huawei Pura 70 Ultra but this one is also working fine thanks to the nice uh, focus peaking that you get uh, just that maybe sometimes especially when they're moving and so on I would like to <laughs> rely on autofocus and not so much on manual focus and holding it hand with, with your hands might be a bit harder main camera shot here with the main camera sensor there what you can see is a bit of a sharpen there for sure um, maybe they tweak the sharpening algorithms a little bit there it's uh, I think it is a zoom in shot for, uh, two times but don't quote me on this uh, it was taken with the main camera sensor at least and as you can see here it tends to overexpose or at least it's not tuning down the highlights so much so it can also like uh, not preserving the highlights is just like simply over if it overexposes it overexposes and I think yeah some people like this approach others would like to have the sky more bluish punchy and the highlights tuned down but this is what I saw with my own eyes as well so it's very close to reality at least uh, ma major uh, maximum zoom here I think it's 21 point something zoom uh, that we have here and uh, to show off the natural bokeh there it's a bit of busy and you can see the foreground is not 100% sharp so I don't see much of an improvement here in terms of zoom to be sure uh, to be completely fair here to the one mark five owners as well that is the issue otherwise what I really like is the detection of dogs animals uh, kids and so on so my dog here for example it detected not only the dog it detected the eye of the dog which is like super amazing with this also I think 10 times zoom that I used here and uh, it's working fine it, it, it's not the best I would say not the detailed one because we have only 12 megapixels it zoomed in quite a bit far here with the three and a half times uh, to actually 7.2 one times to 10 times um, it's a stretch already but it's working fine bokeh mode also here tested on the on Timmy the dog you can see I think the bokeh is okay has some issues there sometimes like with the with the portrait effect there but uh, it's okay and it's very similar to what we had with the one of five as well so that's much of a difference there yeah and again a shot where i will demonstrate to you like it tends to overexpose a little bit so maybe the ev tune it a bit down minus 0 0.3 or even a little bit further might help here uh, to get a less overexposed shot if you like that otherwise this is like uh, yeah showing what uh, how reality looked like don't have any selfies or something like this but I found this here and wanted to take a natural uh, bokeh shot this is not using bokeh mode it's just using uh, a crop-in shot I think I used a crop-in shot there uh, actually not uh, might be not not the crop-in shot um, a normal shot here with the 1x uh, sensor here you can see this in focus and the rest in background there uh, not in focus I think I can get away with this pretty much another zoom test here three and a half times zoom and uh, I don't see much of an improvement here to be completely honest in comparison to the one mark five but this is my first impression so I tested out if there's some text optimizations or something AI going on there to, to optimize the text there I don't see it so much uh, 7.1 times zoom here I also don't see it so much um, maybe less like this blurriness that we had on the one mark five there for sure uh, might be lens variation as well that I had and there's a maximum zoom here a uh, bit of noise creeping in there a bit of like optimization you can read it it's nice uh, but it's not the best I saw very clear shots here on uh, the zoom so yeah something where I would say don't buy this phone if you want <laughs> nice long zooms you have other better alternatives if you wanted more realistic colors then for sure um, yeah this is my first impression here no selfies there um, I will definitely do this as well when I have the time also to compare it with the one mark five side by side and 
yeah, my first impressions here in terms of photography. What do you think about the photos? The first little test with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6 and this one here has a 4K 30, 4K 60 and 4K 120 frames per second recording. I'm recording here 4K 30 right now and I can switch of course uh, to the ultra wide angle there. Just by tapping a button, we have this nice smooth zoom animation or zoom out animation here. And uh, by the way, using the internal mic, so what do you think about this one here on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6? And also I wanna, I wanna show you is a small zoom test. So let's perform a little zoom test. So we try to zoom on the shop there in the background, which is like, I think a hairdresser's shop. So let's go to 3.5 times zoom. Smooth animation there and 7.1 times zoom, optical zoom. It's a bit soft there, but let's go to 10 times, which is now reached. And now let's go to the maximum, which is 21 by uh, 21.3 times zoom. And yeah, can you read the opening times there? I think you can read this. So what do you think about the uh, Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6 here? Back to the one times zoom probably the audio was a bit muffled because by default it is set to use the default back facing uh, microphone for voice optimization also it should filter a little bit of the wind noises out that probably were otherwise listenable or hearable so what do you think about the xperia one mark six and my first impressions here in this video can you guess which one is which yeah i think it's not easy um, to distinguish those two this here is the one mark five and this is the one mark six both in white that i have here but you can see that the white color changed a little bit the back color is the same also feels the same it's the same kind of material that they use but here we have a black camera bump here we have a silver camera bump and what we will also see is that when I go a little closer, you see this here, that this one here is a bit smaller than this one here in terms of widths, but also in terms of heights a little bit there. We have bigger, larger glass on the One Mark 6, where we have a little bit less larger glass on the One Mark 5. The rest is the same, so you will see that uh, basically we have the flash here, we have an infrared port, we have somewhere I think also a back-facing microphone, or is it a back-facing microphone? I'm not sure, uh, maybe back-facing microphone there. So it's basically the same there. The only thing, other thing, thing that we probably don't see is we have an NFC logo here, Sony used to do it, but um, now they are not doing it anymore, but uh, yeah, uh, at least on the One Mark 5 they didn't do it anymore, but here it's back, so not sure why. Anyway, uh, the rest is the same, like I said earlier here we have the buttons for uh, recording, or like the shutter button there, and uh, yeah, this is uh, something that you can see for sure there. So we have a shutter button there and we have another shutter button here and you will see that this one is a bit smaller than this one, it's a bit thicker. Um, the same volume key and the uh, fingerprint reader, nothing much of a difference there. Same goes for the down below, but what people want to see is probably for sure the difference in terms of widths and uh, heights and what we can see here. I just put them side by side. This is the difference. Do you see the difference there? Of course, it's perspective wise. Uh, maybe I tilt it a little bit there. So you will see, yes, the One Mark 5 is a bit taller but the one mark six is a bit wider there as well so can we make it like somehow visible putting one on top of the other to see if you can see the difference there edge to edge you see the difference there it's really millimeters only and the in-hand feeling is not so different i have to say yes everyone is bragging about this feeling a bit better maybe in the hands, more conventional, like a smartphone. But the difference is not so so big, I have to say. And holding this in the ha hand and in one hand here um, feels good. A little bit yeah, wider than I'm used to on the One Mark 5. That's a little bit easier to grip here with my hands, for sure. It's 21 by 9 aspect ratio, but 
but it's not a huge huge difference there in terms of display it is 6.5 versus 6.5 4k versus full hd plus do we see much of a difference there we see a brighter screen here we see a different font for the clock for some reason we see what is quite interesting they for some reason made the icons a little bit smaller there and more compressed so the space here between this row and this row is much higher than here between this row and this row so this is something that somehow makes it possible on this screen even though it's not so tall to fit on fit in another row of icons so i can just simply put uh, let's go to here uh, my famous booking.com here and places there which is impossible here because it's the space between those rows is much larger so they compressed it a little bit down so you see that they changed a little bit there in terms of software then the next thing is of course the stock android versus the modified xperia design you can see already that we have only like four options here and here we have like eight options so double the options which is like already pretty pretty cool and uh, yeah we have the slider for the uh, brightness here already here i have to slide down to see this so this is also maybe a difference there uh, and when I slide down, I can see more options there for sure. This is four and four than eight. So now I can see eight. But here I have double this already. So I have eight and eight, which is 16 options there that I have here. And of course, I can edit stuff and add new stuff. Like, for example, I have an extra dim mode. I have night light mode. So I want to add this night light mode. I can do so. Uh, data roaming setting live transcription settings that i can add mm, sound uh, mode there as well new notes shazam and all the other stuff that i can add there sent to clipboard which ah oh, this might be interesting maybe i i need this sent to clipboard and more often there i can put it here uh, and yeah alarm extra dim one-handed mode and such other things there i can do this but you can see then it will add also another page to it so it's not like growing down here it's just adding another page and uh, there i can find those i like this new style a little bit better and i wish that yeah stock android would come with this style i know it's not perfect looking maybe and not everything is fitting in especially this is english right now but imagine this would be german it would be horrible to fit all those long names for those things in here almost impossible but uh, nevertheless i think they made a good job uh, with this change that we see there otherwise in terms of screen when we check out the uh, settings uh, let's go to settings and let's go to the uh, display settings uh, what we can see is here we have almost the same kind of settings like image quality settings is the same so crater mode crater mode this one is a bit warmer because nightlight is turned on right now if you see the difference there we have real-time hdr drive there as well so not much of a difference there uh, white balance can be set here basically the same you see i have it set to warm here manually i can do it also here on the one mark six i like warmer colors a little bit better and the cooler colors not so much high refresh rate i can set interesting thing is by default if you start the one mark five this is turned off by default when you start the one mark six it's finally turned on the brightness level you can set up here adaptive brightness display and text is the same basically the same settings there not much has changed there in terms of what you can set up on the display so this is just uh, getting this out of the way in terms of battery life also the same kind of thing there you can see it shows, shows even three days in one hour with 46 percent here it shows two days and two hours with 50 percent but this one has to learn my usage still and yeah this one has a sim inside this one doesn't actually it's an e-sim that is inside there uh, sound and vibration oops not storage sound and vibration also sometimes useful for some people we have something different here like for example playback quality and recording quality where you here we have just audio settings where we can set up those uh, we have playback settings where we can see now a little bit easier how effects can be turned on and what what they what they do for music and video and recording quality here what i can set is the wind noise reduction which can be enabled system wide the rest is like we yeah, are normal the, the the volume sliders there 
can set up the alarms, uh, vibration and haptics turned on, haptic motor, haptic engine. If I have to compare it, let's let's just go in here and let's take it in the hand and uh, type in something and uh, do the same on this one here. It's basically the same. Maybe this one is a bit stronger tuned than this one by default, but I think they're using the same haptic uh, motor, haptic engine there uh, as uh, the yeah as before. Let me see some like rows with the orientation there. Not much of a difference there in terms of the rest here. The Android system is the same that's running on those. Uh, it's just like with a bit of tweaks here on this uh, side there. Biggest difference is, like I said, the uh, camera apps are gone here. Those cinematic, Cinema Pro, Video Pro are gone. Music Pro is still there, as you can see here. I have the camera app from here, here as well. I did a video about this as well. No issues there at all with, with this one. So yeah, I like it. Um, easy to transfer from here to here with USB-C cable and the inbuilt Android system. So what else can I tell you? Um, camera, front camera is the same, back cameras are the same, just the glasses I think different there and the software is different here. Um, which one do you prefer? I have to say if you are, if you have a one Mark V, maybe even a one Mark IV, it doesn't make sense to upgrade right now with the high prices. If you have one Mark III, for sure, just get the one Mark VI. It's a refined version of the one Mark V. Uh, just if you need 4K display for some reason, uh, then just take the one Mark V. You can also get it cheaper. Also, yeah, keep that in mind. Eventually, otherwise, uh, short comparison here is just a quick look. Of course, I will do a camera comparison between those two as well at one point. Yeah. And here now a lower light kind of sample of the Xperia 1 Mark VI and this one here is recorded with an external microphone. Yes, indoors with external microphones, outdoors without external microphones. How stupid I am. Um, it just moved so I had to search the microphones and now when I'm recording this I found them so this is why I can use the external mics again. So this is what the performance of the main camera sensor looks like. We're recording video, 4K 30 frames per second in lower light. I think it makes sense. And I think it's working fine here, but I don't see much of a difference to the Xperia 1 Mark V, to be completely honest. Same sensors here, a little bit of tweaked software for sure, and maybe a little bit larger lenses there. At least this is what you saw in the comparison between the camera bumps there. Maybe it helps a little bit here and there, but mostly it is the same performance as with the One Mark V. And I think the One Mark V will also get maybe a little bit of updates there in terms of software that will bring it to the same level as with the uh, One Mark VI here right now. But so far, it's what I had with the first impressions review video was telling you about that it probably doesn't make sense to buy the One Mark VI because no upgrades there so far. That's in terms of cameras only. What I noticed immediately is, yes, battery life is much better, of course. 4K screen, even if it is running, not always at 4K, here on the One Mark V, and we have like a full HD plus screen there. LTPO tag that's not always running at 120 frames per second, but can also dim down to 1 hertz, apparently. Of course, it will save some battery there, and of course, you will have long battery life. So two days battery life is something that in my first impressions here, I can tell you already that probably I will get two days of battery lives out of this device here, which is quite nice. Also, what I can immediately tell you is, yes, the display gets a bit brighter than on the One Mark V, especially outdoors in sunny daylight conditions. Uh, directly in the sun, I was much more able to read the One Mark VI than the One Mark V for sure. So this is something that I can directly tell you here as well. So of all my first impressions, yes, it is a slightly upgraded like version 1.5 maybe of the Xperia uh, One Mark V. So what should it be called? Xperia One Mark 5.5 maybe? what we have here as Xperia 1 Mark VI. Hopefully they'll update a little bit more and make maybe the professional videogra videography apps a little bit more 
the advanced than that were what we had here, especially also with HDR recording, eventually stabilized HDR recording with wide dynamic range, for example, which works, I think, the best. I'm not using this right now. I'm using the default settings here, uh, which is, I think, high stabilization and normal SDR kind of look. Anyway, what do you think about the Xperia 1 Mark 6? That's everything for this uh, short little video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have some questions, write them down in the comment section. And with what of wi or which camera applications or camera-centric smartphones should I compare this? Of course, this one here is already a given. But uh, some other phones that I have, maybe this one here, maybe this one here, probably not this one here. Um, Write it on the comment section. That's everything. Until the next time. Bye.